After a long day, sometimes the best thing to refresh myself is a well-cooked pork chop. Let's see how I do. Now the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take that pork chop out of the refrigerator so it's room temperature when you cook it. Now I chose one with the bone in. I like that because you get that little tenderloin and that's like the secret special part of the pork chop. And because the ends can curl up like JLo's butt when you're cooking it, you wanna score the fat along the straight lines along the outside of the fat. Don't get rid of the fat, just score it so it stays even onto the pan and cooks perfectly. Then you're gonna make sure you add some salt, some pepper, a copious amount that's going to make that sear taste fantastic. And you put it aside while you make the other things. So for our sides tonight, we're going to have first some fingerling potatoes. Look at these things. Huge. They remind me of my father's friend when I was growing up. His name was Mike Delafoff. He had these huge hands. His fingers look like salt and pepper shakers. And well, his wife wore his pinky ring as a bracelet. That's how big his hands were. So we're going to start with these. We've got some olive oil in there. Going to toss it up. Going to get it nice and coated. And in addition to that, we're going to add some salt, some pepper, and some Italian spices. Let me grab that right here. Some Italian spices. Ground black pepper. And let's finish up with some salt. Right, let's reset that up again. Okay, got the oven warming up to 400 degrees. These are going to probably need to cook for 30, 35 minutes. So you got a little bit of time before you make that pork chop. We're also going to complement this pork chop with some sautéed vegetables. We got some yellow and red bell pepper. Got an Italian squash. We got a yellow squash and an onion that was, whew, it was so juicy it had me welling up like I was watching a Sarah McLaughlin dog infomercial. But we're going to also add a little bit of salt and pepper to this. Let everything get to room temperature again. So when you put them in that pan, everything cooks evenly. Everything is nice. Nothing is too cold. And when it's cold. It'll tighten up when you put it in the saute. You don't want that. You want it to be nice and loose. Get a little more Italian right here. Blah, 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 blah. And let those sit for a little bit. Still got some time. We're going to cook these while the pork chop is cooking. For the salad, we're going with some organic power greens. We've got organic blueberries, some fresh organic kiwi, some of the same for the bell pepper, and some heirloom tomatoes. They look fantastic. Let's put them all into the salad here. Colorful salads. They always seem healthier to me. They always seem happier to me. So I always make a lot of colors in my salad. And for some extra brain power, because I don't have a lot of brain left, I'm adding some walnuts on top. Just a little bit of salt, teeny bit of salt, just to bring out the flavor. I'm gonna add some olive oil and some balsamic vinegar. And we are getting close to making that pork chop. All right, salad is done. Now that all the prep is done, it's time to relax with a little Bud Light Platinum and I'm gonna have some chips and salsa tonight just to get myself a little food. Mm. I needed that. Mm, good. Mm. Cheers. All right, got the pan heated up, got the oil in the pan. Wanna make sure it's covering every inch there so nothing sticks. Get your timer set here for five minutes. Five minutes on each side. And I also want you to get your oven ready. You ready, girl? And yeah, drop that in there. Start this timer. You're gonna get your oven set at 350 degrees if you got a pork chop that's thicker than an inch. All right, you're gonna cook it five minutes on each side. You're gonna put it in the oven at 350 for about six to eight minutes. And it's gonna be perfect. It makes it just look like it came out of one of those high-end restaurants. Let's see what happens. Now what's crucial is that you don't touch the chop at all for that first five minutes. You're gonna flip it. We're about 10 seconds away from flipping it, but it should just sit there. Don't bother with the chop, it needs some private time. Uh, here we go. Oh. <laughs> oh, 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 that looks good. Potatoes are ready. This is all searing up. Set the timer now for another five minutes. We're going to put it in the oven for a few minutes, and it's going to be perfect. It's going to cook it to about, I like it about 155, 160 degrees. Anything over 165 degrees, you're going to start drying that thing out. So, you don't want that. So, let's not forget about these vegetables. We've got to saute them, too. Chop's almost ready. Got the pan heated up for the vegetables nicely. Even out that oil, so everything cooks perfectly. I'm going to dump these vegetables right in there. Mm. 
So now I got the chop in the oven. I got these vegetables nearly fully sauteed and perfect. I like them a little crisp, not too overdone. Just want to, oh, I smell that onion. Oh, so good. So good. The onion makes the whole thing. Onions. Okay, we're going to get out of the oven in about two minutes and we're going to have some food. <laughs> so what we got here is a perfectly cooked pork chop. Look at all these colors. Look at all these colors here. Looks like a Disney Pixar film. Yeah, everything is so healthy. Got my vitamins for the evening. I got my second beer. And I got this nice rustic apple tart here for dessert. How are you eating? <laughs>